Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks very much for joining us at the first TinyML Auto Machine Learning Forum. Uh, I really uh, appreciate you joining us, and I, I hope you're looking forward to this exciting couple of hours uh, as much as I am. Um, we're going to really try and do our best to show you a lot of what's going on um, in a really dynamic industry, a really dynamic field of auto machine learning for tiny ML um, and, and, and see what, what all we can do with it. Um, so as we, let me get started. Um, and you know, first we have to thank our tiny machine learning strategic partners. I'm not even gonna attempt to read all of the companies that are sponsors of the tinyml.org, um, but you'll notice that quite a few of the names on uh, this slide are participating in today's forum, are um, either showing demos or are amongst our um, panelists. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's quite a big area in, in overall in the work that goes on in TinyML or, you know, teams and groups have some part of it that they work on that's, that's in this auto machine learning space. Um, so we want to also remind you to uh, if you haven't already, um, if you're if you're on here, there's a good chance you have. But make sure you join one of the growing tiny machine learning communities on, on Meetup and in LinkedIn. Um, there's links and QR codes on here. Um, there are also you'll want to subscribe to the Tiny Machine Learning YouTube channel. Um, we are recording today's event. This whole recording will be posted on the Tiny ML channel. Um, including this video pretty soon. So subscribe, see as the stuff comes up. And as I'm, uh, uh, as I'll mention in a little bit, we're going to have some follow-up deep dive sessions on a number of the tools we talk about uh, in today's sessions. Um, they'll also be recorded, posted to YouTube. Um, and so, you know, check back there, come back there and, and take a look later on. Um, the other big event coming up soon is uh, the EMEA Tiny ML EMEA Innovation Forum in 2022 in October uh, in Cyprus. Uh, the call for presentations is open. You can see the, the link there on the screen. Go sign up, look at going. Um, I think it'll be a really another really good Tiny ML event. Uh, always interesting and exciting kinds of stuff. So do please uh, take a look at, at joining and, and try and present. I also really want to take a minute and thank the technical program committee. Uh, I was lucky enough to be the chair, but uh, none of this would have come together without a bunch of people. Um, Sam, Martin, Kate, Tomas, Danilo, uh, Evgeny, um, a few other people who dropped in from time to time uh, who really helped put this whole event together, came up with the idea and really put their energy and time into making it happen. Um, and so, as I heard uh, both Evgeny and Ira say uh, pretty recently, you know, if there are other uh, areas you're really interested in tiny for tiny ML, um, you know, starting one of these technical program committees and volunteering is a good way to get them going. Um, before we get on to our keynote speaker, I did want to um, point you really quickly, um, just as a reminder. You probably saw this page maybe in an earlier version, but on tinyml.org, we have this tinyml auto ml forum where we talked about this event. You probably went to register, but there's a couple more things on it, uh, even very recently. First is um, we have this document available, um, which is our kind of summary of the current state of this tiny auto ml market. And, and all that really is, is a bunch of these two pagers or one pagers, um, you know, summaries from each of the companies that are presenting today on what their tool can do. Um, but we tried to do it in somewhat of a standardish way so that you could really take a look at the diversity of what's going on out there, what everyone could do, how it worked, things like that um, in a pretty concise kind of way, and then have all the links to go learn more. Um, and so that's available there. The other thing that's available, as I mentioned, is we're having follow-up sessions. So the first thing we're gonna do after our keynote speaker is a series of three-minute demos. So obviously three-minute demos will give you a taste, but you'll not be able to really get in depth. Um, so we have a set of one-hour follow-up uh, deep dive tutorials already scheduled. This isn't everyone. Um, I think we'll probably be adding to this schedule uh, over the next few weeks, but it's most of the companies that are presenting today. Uh, and the links are all live. So you can go and click on them and sign up for one of those deep dives 
right now, or as we're going through the uh, demos or the Q&A, if you think I'd like to learn more about one or another of these tools, a great way to learn more is to go sign up for the deep dive tutorial. Do it right now before you forget um, and, and get in there and, and kind of learn, learn some more. So um, that's my, my first call to action for you, uh, but we'll, we'll kind of remind you of that a little bit later. The next part of our um, kind of talk here, or our, sorry, our agenda here is doing some, as I said, very quick three minute demos. Um, so the idea here is to give you a very quick look at what do these tools look like? How do they work from all of the different uh, companies and teams participating? Um, and, and, you know, how, how do they work in, a, <laughs> in as short as I could get them, squeeze them down to do. So let's go ahead and get started. The order of all of these is kind of randomly determined. Um, there's no particular order to them. Uh, so, but we will get started with uh, Edge Impulse and Jan. Hi, my name is Jan Mwem, the co-founder and CTO of Edge Impulse. And today we're going to show you how the Eon Tuner can help you find the best machine learning model within the constraints of your device. When building an embedded machine learning model, there's a ton of choices that you need to make from determining what your input data should be, like the frequency or the window size, to how a signal processing pipeline would look like. And then of course, your actual model architecture, whether it's a neural network or classical ML. And finally, even post-processing. For example, you might realize that you want a spectrogram as a pre-processing step for audio, but all of these parameters, the number of filters or the FFT length, have a direct effect on the on-device performance, but it's not always clear what effect this is going to have on the accuracy of your model. The same for your neural networks. Do you want a deep or a shallow convolutional neural network? Do you rather want to spend much more time on your signal processing side compared to your neural network? And what is the exact trade-off here in terms of performance, especially in consideration of what you do on device? Now that is where the Eon Tuner helps. The Eon Tuner lets you explore all of these combinations, hundreds and hundreds of combinations in one go. The Tuner will first look at the dataset category. Here we're looking at continuous audio, so something that's playing all the time rather than an event. And the target device. And that is really important because the Tuner will only suggest models that will actually fit the constraints that you set here, whether that's the time per inference or the RAM or ROM available on the target. And the tuner can do more. It has actually a fully configurable search space. So if you have an idea of the type of data that you are looking at, let's say you have custom signal processing blocks and you wanna look at the noise floor in one of those blocks, it's really easy to just go and add that here in the custom search space. So you have full freedom in actually looking at the types of models that we do, even if your data set doesn't fit one of the default categories that we've built. And then what we get out are literally hundreds of different of models. And all of these models show the actual accuracy here on the validation set, overall categories. They allow you to sort over the F1 score um, or test set accuracy instead. And at every point they show the actual latency RAM and ROM requirements of this model on device. The Eon Tuner is part of the Edge Impulse Studio and is available for all users. So join the 40,000 plus developers already on Edge Impulse. Head to edgeimpulse.com and click get started to put some real intelligence in your devices. Awesome, thanks Jan and next, with uh, GreenWaves, we have Martin. This short video shows some of the features of GreenWaves Technologies' GapFlow set of neural network embedded development tools. These tools help to automate many of the necessary steps to port networks from packages such as TensorFlow or PyTorch. GapFlow allows all the powerful tiny ML features of Gap processors to be exploited. NNTool can be accessed from the command line, but also via a powerful Python API. The API integrates perfectly with your neural network development process, enabling experimentation and automation. 
Gapflow includes wide operator coverage for both TF Lite and ONNX network formats, including support for convolutional, time domain and transformer based networks. Gapflow's NN tool utility optimizes neural network graphs, increasing their energy efficiency when running on gap processors. Gapflow allows gap processors support for per layer quantization in 16-bit float or fixed point to be used to provide excellent power performance without sacrificing accuracy. NNTool includes bit accurate Python simulations of on-device kernels, allowing most validation to be done off device. The NNTool API can be used to build C projects that execute networks on device, retrieving back performance and tensor information into Python. This allows tricky performance and accuracy problems on the device to be solved quickly. The Gapflow Autotiler automatically optimizes movement of data across the memory hierarchy, both internal and external to GAP, and then generates readable, debuggable C code for all of these operations. These tools support multi-network execution and integration with real-time sensitive data flows. GAP SDK's simulator and profiler integrate perfectly into the GAP flow network porting process providing the detailed information necessary when solving the toughest performance problems. Gapflow supports the embedded neural network developer by integrating perfectly into their design flow, increasing their productivity without sacrificing their flexibility. Hello, my name is Blair Newman, the CTO here at Newton.ai. Nowadays, the demand for intelligent tiny devices is growing exponentially. With that said, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. What if you could build models less than one kilobyte in just one iteration? What if you can solve complex tasks with a neural network up to a thousand times smaller compared to other frameworks that you may have worked with? What if you could implement common tiny ML projects on memory constrained devices, even with 8-bit capacity. What if you can do all of this without any data science knowledge in just three clicks? Well, let me introduce you to Newton.ai. Meet Newton AI, a no-code tiny machine learning platform that empowers users to build extremely compact models and embed them into unbelievably tiny devices, even with 8-bit capacity. You can easily solve regression, classification, and anomaly detection tasks with sensor, audio, and tabular data in a single iteration. Having a unique neural network framework under the hood, Newton AI automatically creates models of minimal size and without loss of accuracy, up to 1,000 times smaller in comparison to other frameworks. Newton doesn't create models with a predefined structure. It grows the network neuron by neuron, using a unique patented algorithm to adjust coefficients within a model. It allows you to create compact and accurate models with excellent generalizing capabilities, ready for deployment on a device without additional compression. Leveraging Newton, you can perform the most common tiny machine learning tasks such as creating smart human interfaces based on voice, gestures, or movements, performing predictive maintenance of vehicles or equipment, monitoring device conditions and physical assets, recognizing wake words, detecting voice, and classifying sound events. Let's have a look at how to easily create a model for in-air handwriting recognition, using an accelerometer-based pen and Nicholas Sense ME. Simply upload the collected data to the Newton platform in a CSV format. Specify the target variable. Activate digital signal processing for automatic data preprocessing and feature extraction. And select 8 bit calculations. The model is trained automatically. We achieved 98% accuracy and less than 1 kilobyte in model size. 
forget about compromising on size or accuracy, because no compression techniques are required. Download the ready-to-use C library and embed it into a microcontroller. Now you can run inferences on the device and recognize error written numbers. Explore how to build these extremely compact models without code and embed them into the tiniest devices with Newton.ai. Absolutely free. See you there. So next we have uh, Stream Analyze and Magnus. SA Engine is a streaming analytics platform for edge devices. It is an engine that runs on almost any hardware, and you can interact with it with our integrated development environment SA Studio or through the command line. SA Engine can be installed on many different platforms, like regular PCs, single board computers or microcontrollers. Here we see how SA Engine is installed on an Android device. With SA Studio you can interact with your device and get streaming data in real time. Deploying analytics on your device is as simple as clicking a button. Here we see how we interact with the device to get the sensor data stream from the accelerometer in real time. You can easily create models with our powerful query language. With just a few lines of code you can for example, use mathematical and statistical methods, or neural networks, to develop models that clean, interpret, and reduce data, to only send valuable information from the device. Here we see how a model is deployed to the Android device. The model uses accelerometer data to detect when the device is shaking. If the device is shaking, the model outputs a 1. If the device is still, the model outputs a zero. This is a significant reduction of data, especially compared to sending the unprocessed accelerometer data stream over a mobile connection for processing in the cloud. SA Engine facilitates real-time streaming analytics on edge devices like no other platform. Its small footprint, less than 80 kilobytes, makes it suitable for microcontrollers and other resource constraint devices. You can easily manage streaming data on the device with queries, and queries can be refined in real time. You can quickly visualize and forward data interactively, enhancing insights into how your device works. You can deploy and apply models either programmatically or with the click of a button. Models are deployed instantly on live devices, without any need for firmware updates. The incredibly fast process of modeling testing and deployment, enables quick adjustments of models in production. Powerful data reduction and interpretation reduces costs and facilitates smart devices. SA Engine, Edge AI made simple, quick, and interactive. Excellent. And next we have uh, Sensi ML with Chris. Hello, my name is Mark Giroux. I'm software development lead at Sensimal. The goal of this video is to give a basic overview of the Sensimal toolkit and how we make it easy to build an IoT event detector application from complex sensors. The Sensimal toolkit can build algorithms to detect meaningful events for a range of applications from industrial machinery fault detection to wearable activity devices. Let's take a look at a specific wearable gesture example. I will be showing how to train a device with the gesture M event in this example. With the Sensimal Toolkit, your sensor data and algorithms are saved in a project on Sensimal servers for easy access. This allows for large teams to collaborate on a single project. The first step in creating an application will be recording examples of the events you want the sensor to detect. To do this, we provide the Data Capture Lab. While in capture mode, we select the event we are collecting, click Begin Recording, and capture live events from the sensor in real time, 
In our case, this is the letter M. After you've collected your data, you can explore and label your data through the DCL's Label Explorer mode. There are a lot of tools in this mode, including video playback, project organization, and algorithm building. For this video, we will jump right into using an algorithm to label our data for us. To do this, click Detect Segments with our algorithm selected. This tells the sensor how to find our events by wrapping each event with an event segment. We've now shown our sensor how to detect the gesture M event. The Sensible Toolkit also includes the Analytics Studio to further explore and refine your event detection algorithm using machine learning. Let's take a look at how this is done. One of the biggest advantages to algorithms generated through the Sensible Toolkit is they run directly on the sensor without ever needing a connection to the cloud. Using machine learning, the Analytics Studio will automatically find the most optimized model for your hardware. You can tweak your algorithm to minimize your memory and power usage for your hardware sensor of choice. Once you finish tweaking your algorithm, select your hardware platform and click Flash, and the Analytics Studio will put the event detection algorithm onto the sensor. I've now taken you through the entire process of recording your events, labeling your events, and building an algorithm with the Sensible Toolkit. You can now take your sensor into the wild, and it'll detect those events for you. Uh, next, we have Imagimob with Sam. Imagimob's Imagimob AI platform is a development platform designed to allow users to build production-ready models. It covers a wide range of the production cycle, going all the way from data collection to data management that allows you to generate models without AutoML functionality and to eventually go to the evaluation phase and to actually deploy the model. ImagineMob AI is designed to work with any kind of time series sensor and can work for a wide variety of different applications. It also allows you to deploy these models and run them on the microcontrollers very easily. In this video, we will see some of the applications running in actual real-world scenarios. One of these applications could be gesture detection using different radars. For example, you can use an Aquini radar or a Texas Instruments radar. You can also use a microphone to trigger an output on different words or events in the surrounding area. See here how the lights change depending on the sound detected. Down, down, up, down, down, up, up. Blah, 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 up, down. Here you see another gesture application, but now using a different radar, this time it's using a Texas Instruments radar. What's interesting in the application so far is that they are all running in real time on different MCUs, such as the Texas Instruments, SD semiconductors, and Nordic semiconductors. All the models are small, on average being 10 to 20 kilobytes of RAM. Now we see letter detection on a capacitive touchpad from Renesas, demonstrating yet another way to use TinyML and ImagineMob AI. From running different customer projects, we have gained an intimate understanding of what's needed to build great models. What you are seeing here is the platform with data signals and a video used to aid in labeling and analysis. This video is not used for training, only for the analysis part. We can also see the model outputs from the training process. Another thing we have learned is the value of proper field testing for TinyML products. It is not always easy, but it is necessary. In the video, you can see myself testing two new full algorithm watches on different hands and using two BellPal watches as control for the statistics. You have now seen how TinyML, with the help of ImagineMob AI, can be used for different applications. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website. Thank you for listening. And next, we have uh, Shrag from Qualcomm talking about the AI Met Toolkit.
Neural network models can be very large and compute intensive, which can make them challenging to run on edge devices. Model quantization provides significant benefits in power and memory efficiency, as well as latency. Quantization of a 32-bit floating point model to an 8-bit or 4-bit integer model often results in accuracy loss. Qualcomm AI Research has developed state-of-the-art quantization techniques that minimize bit precision while preserving model accuracy. These techniques are made available to the open source community through AI Model Efficiency Toolkit, AMET. Adaround, which stands for Adaptive Rounding, is a post-training quantization technique, so it requires only minimal unlabeled data and no model fine-tuning. Rather than rounding to the nearest value during quantization, Adaround automates finding the best rounding choice in order to retain model accuracy. Results for object detection and semantic segmentation tasks show Adaround significantly outperforms nearest rounding and provides performance close to floating point models. To demonstrate this, we compare Adaround 8-bit weight and activation quantization with the baseline 8-bit quantization technique on an object detection model. Object detection is a computer vision technique used to locate, identify, and label elements in a photo or video. For autonomous driving use case, accurately identifying types of vehicles and their precise location is crucial. The baseline quantization method misidentifies this object as a motorcycle. With Adaround, it correctly does not identify a vehicle. In this frame, you can see that a truck was misclassified in the baseline, but correctly classified in Adaround. Also notice that the bounding box around the foreground truck is more accurate. Similarly, the first method misidentifies two cars as unknown and truck. With Adaround, vehicles are labeled correctly and the bounding boxes match the ground truth more closely. The same goes for this motorcycle, which is not identified in the baseline model, but correctly identified with Adaround. An optimized 8-bit integer model can achieve greater than 4 times increase in performance per watt against the original 32-bit floating model on edge devices. Quantization can be the difference maker in whether neural networks can run on target devices. Our research will continue to push the limits of what's possible with machine learning. Next we have uh, the last three couple videos we have here will be uh, sort of more live and uh, narrated. Uh, so Leslie, you on there? I'll be talking about Kixo's AutoML. Uh, the example here is a motor on which we would do multi-class classification uh, with simulated faults. Our user is now choosing the project and project type and the hardware, which is STWIN kit, which is attached to the motor. Um, for our data collection, <clears throat> choosing the sensors, in this case, we'll go with accelerometer and gyroscope at the highest uh, ODR level. Right, so now we're flashing the uh, binary for data collection to the device. Once flashed, the user can choose their classes. So we'll collect normal or regular data first. The motor is off, now we're starting it up. And uh, once it's started up, the user will collect the data. We're collecting 200 seconds here, time lapse. Uh, now we'll simulate a fault by putting a bolt on the rotor for an imbalanced rotor, collecting imbalanced data. Next, removing the regular rotor and replacing it with the eccentric rotor <clears throat> for simulating a different kind of fault. And then finally collecting 200 seconds of data where the motor is off. Now for model training, our user is selecting uh, 
the various data sets that it's collected and um, allowing AutoML to choose automatically some things about the settings. Uh, the user setting the instance length to be 100 mill 150 milliseconds. Keeks AutoML has many models to choose from. Here we're just choosing three, and uh, here's the time lapse of the train. We can see that AutoML has a lot of results for the uh, user, including estimated performance, but also latency and model size, uh, all of which are below five kilobytes in this case. Our users has pushed the random forest model to the device so that we can test live. The motor starts it off, and you can see we're predicting off. As we cut to the motor, the motor is coming online and is now at high RPM in the normal state. So it is saying regular. Back to off while our user makes the motor in bounce. And as it warms up, we go from off eventually to in bounce on the ride. So high RPM bump. Finally, replacing the rotor with the <clears throat> eccentric rotor. Testing live again. And we do get eccentric. Uh, that concludes this demo. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Kiso AutoML, please visit kiso.com uh, and automl.kiso.com for a free uh, sign up. Thank you. Thanks very much, Leslie. Uh, Wanyu, you ready? Yeah, Ari. Okay, here you go. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Mary, huh? a research engineer in Nota AI. In this session, I'm going to introduce Nota Nespresso briefly within three minutes. Nespresso is a set of three sub modules of the model search, model compressor, and model launcher. Um, you can see that model launcher is going to be released on July 2022. So, in this session, I'm going to briefly introduce model searcher and model compressor. The screen here shows the model searcher, the intro part of the model searcher. So the concept of model searcher is a tool for hardware aware neural architecture search to search a small EL model aware in the specs of target hardware. So it's currently on beta service. So you can uh, you can register online and write on our registration queue. Then we are going to assign you our resource to test the model searcher. Uh, there is a benefit of awareing the uh, inference result on each device. In most, ca in most cases, if you wish to obtain tiny DL model, it means the model will be run on edge devices, which has different environment, very different environments on which the model is trained. Usually, model is, model is trained on server scale machines and ported into tiny devices after it's trained. Then, tiny model uh, could run well in service when often fail to perform smoothly in tiny devices. So if you use model searcher, you will see the search model is already tested in real edge devices and training time. Then it's guaranteed. This point is important. It's guaranteed for the search model to perform well in tiny target device, since the inference speed is measured on time on real device on training time. So rather than relying on simulation or guessing the performance of the tiny machine learning model, the point is with machine model searcher, no gap on model performance is guaranteed between server scale machine and inference in tiny scale machine. The uh, next thing is the model compressor. Uh, the model compressor is a web server web service um, of single function. You can imagine just a single function, which being uploaded DL model, you upload the DL model on the model compressor and with you, the model compressor will return you a compressed DL model within just five minutes. It's very simple concept is very simple. Unload it, non unload your pre-trained model, and you can down you can be downloaded a compressed model uh, within five minutes. The model compressor is currently on air on public, so you can um, you can register and test it right away if you want. So this image shows this scene shows the yeah you can you can find the once you unload your model, you will see the the, the detailed profile of the HD layers and filters, then you will see the result uh, within five minutes. You, you see the flops are dropped and model size are reduced. So, um, yeah, this is a model compressor. You can test it right away. For more information, uh, please visit uh, Nota AI the homepage. Yeah, thank you.
Excellent. Thanks, Wanyu. Uh, yep. D, are you ready? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, Great. everybody. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Today, I'm going to introduce uh, OmniML. Uh, we focus on Empower Edge AI, focusing on providing an auto ML tool for ML engineer to solve that fundamental problem in Edge AI, whereas the mismatch between algorithm and the hardware. And uh, uh, we our core product is called Omnimizer, where we focus on optimizing the model even before training and leverage neural architecture search uh, together with hardware in the loop, uh, profiling and deployment to help ML engineer to get the best model to start targeting various kinds of hardware constraint. In a very simple four steps, we can integrate Omnimizer APIs into a PyTorch model. We support any user-defined PyTorch model. And then we train the model just like normal. And uh, uh, then we can customize the model based on all kinds of different hardware constraints like max and latency without the need of retraining. After that, we get an optimized model target the specific hardware with uh, up to 100% faster. And that is our orthogonal to any downstream optimizations. And our platform support you know, any model, uh, support any hardware, ranging from MCUs to high performance GPUs. And also we support any ML task. Uh, we can optimize any generic PyTorch model, increase the ROI, um, you know, founded by uh, some of the best researchers as well as engineers um, uh, in efficient deep learning. Um, and uh, um, you know, uh, the technology behind us was very, very well recognized by industry leaders as well as academic. Uh, uh, uh. And one of our early customer is WISE, where they deploy object efficient object detection models on the camera itself. And also the use cases can be expanded to various verticals like mobile, autonomous driving, uh, home security cameras, even computer vision and microcontrollers. Here are some uh, user case demonstration. Um, first is a uh, collaboration with uh, Qualcomm Robotics on a molecular depth estimation deployed on autonomous uh, mobile robot. We demoed this uh, just last week, a few weeks ago on the Hanover Messi. And this is a 3D detection with sensory fusion, six cameras, doing 3D detection segmentation, running on the NVIDIA Jetson Xavier device. And this is a joint detection segmentation running you know, also on a Xavier device with 100 FPS, uh, with a very high accuracy. And this is the MCU net uh, detecting person reliably on the Cortex M7 microcontroller with only 256 kilobytes uh, of memory. All of that use cases are enabled by performing up model optimization right from the design time and the training time uh, and that unlocks orders of magnitude of improvement. And uh, if you want to learn more, please contact us on the ML. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks very much, D. And uh, thanks to all of our uh, presenters. That's what happens when you try and uh, that's what happens when you get 11 demos of different tools and toolkits in uh, in about in a little less than 35 minutes. Um, so uh, hopefully that was interesting. And, um, before we get on, the, the, the rest of our agenda is going to be very much of a roundtable discussion. Um, so I'm going to ask the rest of my panelists to uh, get ready to get on camera and start answering some questions. But while they do that, I wanted to uh, remind everyone, I think uh, Rosina and some others have um, mentioned it in the chat, but they're um, uh, on our on the tiny ML uh, website again. Um, on the page for this AutoML forum is both linked the uh, the one pager that has all of the um, all of the brief information and all the links about all these tools that and all these companies that we've talked about today, as well as the link for um, the uh, the upcoming. Well, I found I'm on the wrong one. There it is. Event details. Um, the AutoML deep dive tutorial registration. So this page right here, um, you can get linked. Obviously, three minutes is not enough to learn enough learn very much about any of these tools. Uh, a one hour deep dive will teach you a lot more. Uh, you can see the schedule on the slide right here. This QR code will just take you back to that same web page that I was just showing. Um, 
but hopefully that'll be useful for anyone uh, watching later on YouTube or uh, anything like that. We do anticipate that all these deep dives will also be recorded and available for follow-up um, in the uh, uh, on YouTube as well later. So I'm going to start uh, going through the very many um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sponsor pages, strategic partner pages for TinyML. Um, while I also thank kind of all of our panelists um, today, you know, I, I really appreciate everyone's time, the hard work everyone put into preparing for this event. Um, uh, Sam, Martin, um, uh, Wan Yu, Jan, Danilo, Magnus, Leslie, D, Blair, Shirag, and Christopher and Chris. Uh, you know, really great job, everybody. Um, I think it, it really went well. I'm really happy with how it all turned out. Um, and thanks also to the whole working group um, who helped me, uh, who we all worked really closely together to put all this together. Thanks also to Gajel for our keynote uh, there at the beginning. Um, and of course, uh, as thanks to the Tiny ML uh, uh, Foundation uh, organization for, you know, really helping all of us help this whole market come together. And uh, of course, as I'm going through them, all of the sponsors of tinyml.org uh, who make all of that possible. I think we're all kind of united in seeing the vision of this uh, whole industry and um, all of the potential of it. And we hope that you learned a lot today and that you're excited by uh, some of the tools you saw, maybe all the tools you saw and wanna learn more. Um, please do attend future events. Um, there are uh, discussion forums on tinyml.org. Uh, there is also, as I mentioned before, a number of documents and resources and follow-up sessions. So please stay in contact, reach out to uh, any of us on the call here or reach out to tinyml.org to learn more and follow up. And uh, that is all for today. So thanks very much, everybody, and uh, have a great day.